Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, today's upload is, um, sorry about that voice crack, but, uh, today's upload is going to be about the spring polar vortex, and I, I mentioned it in my previous video, I think it, uh, it was a couple days ago, filmed, uh, it was filmed a couple days ago, and uh, it was spring polar vortex, and I'll continue calling that because, um, as I'm recording this video, it's March 1st, this will be released March 2nd, and uh, happy meteorological spring guys in case you didn't know spring in meteorologically uh, starts on uh, march 1st which is as i'm recording this video today but uh, will be yesterday when it's released also uh, you may realize this is a little bit different setup i had got a new computer with my money that i've earned from youtube i scraped it up and i've got a new computer and and hopefully it sounds better. The audio, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit iffy. And that's because uh, the microphone is flashing at me right now. This yellow s sign. And earlier I tried it, it worked. But it was still flashing. So it might work, may or not. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see in the actual video. So mention or comment down below whether it sounds better or the quality is better. Um, and uh, the best way to support this channel so I could you know, continue maybe getting better devices is by subscribing. If you want to more directly support, you could become a Patreon, and that's by uh, clicking the link in the descri description box below and then signing up. So let's focus on the cold weather. So again, there is going to be several storms occurring. I will be making a video on the general pattern, the long range, maybe soon. And I will be making a video on this, uh, the upcoming snowstorm, winter storm, Scott, as well today. So uh, that will be uploaded on Saturday as well. So let's uh, look at the GFS. But let's go to thermo thermodynamics and let's go to two meter temperature anomaly, which shows us where it's below or above average at what given time. And we will be seeing very, very, very chilly temperatures, guys. I, whoa, sorry, um, uh, very cold temperatures. So um, this will be coming from the northwest and 30 to 40 degrees below average is definitely not out of the question. Um, this won't be as cold as it would, was in January. Remember that polar vortex? Uh, that's because it necessarily won't be, you know, not necessarily will be uh, not as strong. It will be very powerful. It's just that the averages of this time of the year are higher than the averages in January. So what was 30 degrees below Jan average in January is not the same um, cold magnitude as it is going to be in March. Um, so we see right now we're st still fairly chilly across the U.S. If you go past, this is a negative hour, so what was going on, you can see very ch it was very chilly across the U.S. In fact, it was downright cold. But now the second push of air, or even third or fourth at this point, I lost count. There's just been so many. Um, this one will be very powerful, very powerful. Uh, you can see it originates from uh, the, the northwest and it starts around in, this is British Columbia, this is Alberta, this is Saskatchewan, I think this is Manitoba, I think I got my provinces right, maybe not. But very chilly air, and as we go forward in time, this is now Saturday, March 2nd, or I should say, uh, this is right now what's going on right now as I'm recording this video. Uh, late Friday evening, it's encroaching on us. We go in time, this is around noon, maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon Saturday. You can see there's a big storm going on or it's starting to form, starting to go on, and right there it's starting to form, you can see, and it rides up between this baroclinic zone, which is, I don't have a drawing tool yet, but I will get one soon. Um, it's basically the convergence of the two air masses. You can see the, the warm in the southeast and a cold in the northwest, the purples, the pinks for the northwest. And uh, between this two is a little zone where these storms can travel. And this storm is taking right that path. And it's going up into the northeast, dropping plenty of snow for the northeast. And I will be making a video about that again um, Saturday, March 2nd. So that will also be up a little bit later than this video. So if you're watching this maybe at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, right when it's uploaded, get ready because I'm uploading another one probably around 3 to 4 o'clock or maybe even 5 in the afternoon about Winter Storm Scott, which is what the Weather Channel decided to call the storm. And uh, thankfully, I guess if you want to call it the silver lining of this is that um, this will be most likely the biggest cold air mass of the season. Um, I mean, the biggest air mass of the season to kind of finish it off. Like, basically, this is how cold it will get in March and 
from there things seem to start warming up we're looking up into a warming pattern into mid-march uh, i'm not saying that winter is over because i think we'll still see very numerous amounts of snowstorms and snow events just that i think the 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 frequency may be a little bit less the magnitude may still be fairly significant i don't think that you know i think it actually may increase because with these big storms ew oh, sorry with these big storms uh, there's a lot of moisture, a lot of precip. Uh, fuck you. Uh, there's a lot of energy, and some of this, if there's cold enough air that transitions toward, you know, with it, um, then it could produce lots of snow. So um, I just think that you know the days are getting longer, obviously, and we will start seeing warmer temperatures. And I just don't think it will be as long as of winter as last year. So I'm ranting a little bit right now, but let's go further into this. So the peak of this will be around um, late Sunday, Sunday, Sunday night, and into Monday morning. That's when it will be the coldest across the most amount of area across the fairly populated areas. Um, not the east, so not like the mother lord of population, but the Midwest, you know, there's some fairly large cities. Chicago, Milwaukee, Green Bay, Des Moines, Iowa, Minneapolis. Up here in the Dakotas are not, you know, not major cities, but there's still some large cities. Bismarck, Minot, um, still some fairly significant areas that uh, have uh, quite some population of people. And you can see... Um, these temperatures will be, look at that, that's some bright pink, that is 20 to 30 degrees below average, so if your average is 20 to 30 degrees, then you'll be looking at 10, 0 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very cold for March or spring, I could say, um, since this is already one of the first couple of hours of spring, well, this will, first couple of days that this will be occurring will be in the spring and then it really starts to quickly diminish you can see the magnitude of it the strength isn't as great into Tuesday uh, and uh, um, March 5th now we start seeing things starting to warm up not necessarily you know it's not gonna be warm but definitely not as cold as it was Monday or Sunday and let me just compare it to you look at these colors compared to this now starting to cool down it will obviously hang around for a little bit you won't be you know all quick and done within a day that's usually not how polar vortexes work but uh, you can see that this new model run of the GFS has a cold a warm push of air pushing this cold air out and this is only how far it goes 150 hours so let's go back to the 18z Friday and uh, you can see there's this cold air sticks around but I don't know if this GFS is completely right because the, the GFS does tend to have in general the GFS ensembles have to s seem to have a cold bias where they tend to show more cold than there actually will be but still this is not that bad this is not like tragic cold definitely chilly but um, nothing unbearable but then look at this we start warming up and we actually go into the above average so going from a 20 to 30 degrees below average to a uh, 5 to 10 degrees above average is quite a big difference. That's a 40 almost degree temperature different change and that will be very noticeable so even if it will be 40s or 50s may not sound warm it will feel pretty dang warm compared to what we've been seeing. So let's go to actual 2 meter temperature shaded and let's see what's you know, what's gonna actually bring what's these what's this spring polar vortex gonna bring so right there you can see the storm is occurring the winter storm scott and a lot of the snow will be falling even when it's above freezing and uh, you know maybe you, you may be thinking that's not possible but it definitely is uh, it will be marginal marginally above freezing 33 34 35 36 pushing it but um, it will it will still accumulate I think maybe not as much as it would in early winter or late or or midwinter where it's colder and there's just better the sun angle is not as uh, high and the sun heat from the sun is not as strong and the time of the day and the length of the day is not as long um, I uh, I do think though that the snow will this heavy snow rates will overcome the the, the 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 you know the disadvantages that it has falling in late late winter. I think in early spring, I think it will still overcome and accumulate. And, you know, I mean, the temperatures will be very marginal for the storm, but uh, I think it will definitely still accumulate. We look going into time, look at these. This is Monday morning, 
and this is when it's going to be the coldest probably across and look it's not a great start to the week guys this is monday many people are waking up going to school to work anything you've got any activities and look at this a lot of a huge portion of the country below zero and negative 14, negative 15, negative 19, negative 15. A lot of records will be broken, that's for sure. And then we see uh, during the day Monday, uh, we see not a lot. This is this is during the day Monday. We see negatives still. Does, many places don't even up, get above zero during the day. And for March, that is not completely uncommon. But that's not all too common either. So uh, records will be probably broken um, for certain cities and certain areas for certain criteria, and then look at how far the 32 degree line gets many locations here are already planting have already uh, their crops out I mean February March definitely it's time of the year where in the south we start seeing uh, the planting the gardening of agriculture agricultural season going up and look, the frost freezes get as far south as central Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and northeast Georgia. Um, and then look at that. It gets all the way down to the Gulf Coast states. So several more frosts definitely still to go for the south. And uh, then, again, things start to back up. We see cold, you know, below average, especially maybe we could see a second blast around next weekend. But um, definitely not too bad. 12, 23, not, not, not nearly as bad as some of the ones we just saw, which is, you know, these numbers but below zero, negative 23, negative 12. So definitely some improvement. And then we really start warming up. Look at this. 60s reach, uh, the 32-degree line just gets shoved completely, eliminated out of even the United States. And then look at this. 50s, 60s in northern Illinois gets up as much as, gets up as north as much as, oh my, I can't even speak, gets Far north as uh, Central Michigan and uh, just the Iowa, Southern Minnesota area. So definitely welcome. And look at that, 60s, potentially 70s across the east. Not saying you know it's gonna happen, but it could be definitely a trend of something of some sort. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.